Now more than ever, it's important to stay as healthy as possible. Having a balanced diet can help. The World Health Organization suggests eating a variety of food from different nutritional groups, including plenty of fruit and vegetables. The WHO also recommends eating a diet rich in whole grains and nuts, limiting your intake of sugar, salt and fat, practicing good food hygiene to avoid becoming sick of foodborne disease, and limiting your consumption of alcohol. Research shows improving nutrition helps support optimal immune function. So if you catch COVID-19, your immune system may be better equipped to fight it. This is DW's COVID-19 special. I'm Kate Ferguson. Thanks for joining me. The past few months have been tough. Living in constant fear of getting sick or losing your job can make you feel like you're not in control. One thing you do have some agency over, though, is your diet. And as our next report shows, good nutrition can have a major impact on health outcomes. So, dann guten Appetit. Dankeschön. Few really like hospital food, but it's more than just a question of taste. Nutrition is vital and most clinics and hospitals pay too little attention to a well-balanced diet. Dr. Viola Andresen from Hamburg has been dealing with the effects of poor hospital nutrition on patients for 20 years. These people simply are more at risk of being in the ICU for longer, of having to stay in hospital longer, of increased complications and are even more at risk of dying from their disease. Geriatric physician Dr. Martin Wilkom has many weak patients and he sees the dangers of poor nutrition every day. Eating an unbalanced diet, especially in the elderly, causes them to lose weight quickly and lose substance. The body can no longer heal wounds as quickly. People get dizzy, they fall over. Problems flare up in days and weeks when the food and liquids are not balanced and above all, not sufficient entstehen, wenn das Essen und Trinken nicht ausgewogen und vor allem nicht ausreichend ist. The doctor's experience is borne out by a major Swiss study. 2,000 participants with already poor nutrition took part in the study. 1,000 were given regular hospital food. The other half were given a healthier alternative. Within the group that received the superior diet, outcomes were significantly better, with 15% fewer complications and 27% fewer deaths. A few days of hospital food won't harm most people, but the very ill have often already lost weight and strength beforehand. Here at the Israelite Hospital in Hamburg, a specialist nutrition team takes care of these high-risk patients, selecting them for special attention as soon as they're admitted. In a three-day period, 21 of 53 newly admitted patients were noticed by the experts. There are various methods for measuring malnutrition. This device measures how much strength there is in the hands or how much muscle and fat tissue is on the back of the hand or even how is body tissue composed. A special scale shows the proportion of muscle and fat and of course blood values. Is there a lack of iron, sodium, potassium or protein? Patients who are malnourished are given extra care. Special nutrition-filled shakes with cucumber or beetroot and extra protein or sweetened with banana and chocolate to improve strength and charge the batteries for recovery. Protein helps to heal wounds, for example. Zinc serves to ward off infection. The key to making a full recovery is freshly prepared food, rich in nutrients. If clinics pay proper attention to nutrition, a lot can be achieved through normal diet. Sometimes it only takes a little extra effort with nutrition to achieve great results. Let's talk now to Professor Annika Wagner from the Institute of Nutritional Sciences at the University of Gießen. Professor Wagner, the study we saw in the report just now really reiterated what an incredibly crucial role nutrition plays in our general health and as well our ability to heal. Do you think this issue is getting enough attention during the pandemic? 
I think the effect of nutrition on our health in the context of the current pandemic is underestimated. A high number of people suffer from different diet-dependent diseases such as obesity, diabetes type 2 and hypertension. And we know that these patients have a significantly higher risk for severe causes of COVID-19. That means that through a sustainable change of unhealthy dietary habits towards a healthy, well-balanced diet, will improve these um, diet-dependent diseases and simultaneously would decrease the risk for a severe cause of a COVID-19 infection. However, as a change in our nutritional behavior is a long-term goal, long-term concepts need to be established and strongly promoted, which is currently not the case. And I really want to zone in now on obesity, which you mentioned. It is, of course, a major risk factor for becoming seriously ill from COVID-19. Why is that exactly? So obesity is the main risk factor for the development of several comorbidities so that predispose for a severe course of a COVID-19 infection. That includes especially hypertension, type 2 diabetes mellitus and um, cardiovascular diseases which are all known to be responsible um, that people get seriously ill. But also in the absence of these comorbidities, obese people are at a higher risk for a severe COVID-19 course, as most obese persons are in a state of a pre-diabetes that also increase the risk of infection. Now, there's also been some focus on the role that vitamin D could play in helping to protect against the virus. What can you tell me about that? So for a well-functioning immune system, vitamin D is, of course, essential besides other vitamins and minerals. And therefore, an adequate supply with vitamin D is also essential to protect us against um, invading pathogens and also the, um, against infections like um, with SARS-CoV-2. There are currently some discussions about daily supplementation with vitamin D to support our immune system in the fight against COVID-19. However, if we look into the currently available studies, there's no evidence provided that a high-dose vitamin D supplementation um, prevents from a SARS-CoV-2 infection or would help to a better recovery from an infection. Indeed, what we should definitely avoid is a state of vitamin D deficiency. In case of an approved vitamin D deficiency, of course, vitamin D should be supplemented. And in case people would like to supplement vitamin D, although, um, as I mentioned, evidence is currently missing, they should make sure that they not exceed the recommended daily upper limit of 4,000 international units. Okay, and now, of course, we all have different dietary needs, but what general advice would you have for boosting immunity during this time? So that our immune system will work well, um, I recommend to stick to a plant-based diet containing high amounts of fresh fruits and vegetables that um, provide high amounts of essential vitamins and uh, nutrients. And I recommend also to consume whole grain foods when it comes to um, cereals or bread and um, also include pulses in the daily diet as they are fiber rich. And I furthermore suggest to um, stick to vegetable oils with um, high amounts of polyunsaturated fatty acids. And what we should do is to lower the consumption of, for example, sugar sweetened beverages and sweets. And um, also we should limit the consumption of meat. Okay, and finally, this is a question that's come up a few times. Is there any risk of being infected with the coronavirus through food? So the data that is currently available does not show any case where an infection occurred through contaminated foods. However, um, when we prepare food, we should stick to the hygiene rules. Um, this means, of course, we should um, regularly wash our hands, keep our fingers away from, from the face. And also, if we prepare meat, we should make sure that it is heated through. All good tips. Professor Annika Wagner from the Institute of Nutritional Sciences at the University of Gießen, thank you so much. Thank you. Time now to answer one of your questions about the coronavirus over to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. What impact is the pandemic having on the hunger crisis? Predictably, COVID-19 is making it a lot worse. Um, according to the United Nations World Food Program, which is the organization that was awarded this year's Nobel Peace Prize, um, the number of people worldwide who suffer from crisis level hunger could almost double 
by the end of this year. Um, it also says that the region hit hardest so far is Latin America. Um, that's followed by Central and Southern Africa. And, and Oxfam estimates that if we don't do more to limit the social and economic impact of the virus, up to 12,000 people a day could soon be dying from the effects of undernourishment. Um, just to compare, even on the very worst days for mortality so far in the pandemic, there have never been more than 10,000 deaths attributed to the virus in 24 hours. I think that the most vicious aspect of this crisis is that with the exception of a few countries, food is actually available in many of the places that are suffering most. A famine isn't being only driven by a lack of food, but also by the simple fact that people no longer have the means to buy it. Um, the hunger crisis isn't only expanding rapidly because of disruptions in supply chains, although that's certainly contributing to the problem. Um, it's also due to dropping income among many of the world's most vulnerable, the poor, who simply can't afford to buy food for themselves and their families anymore. And the crisis isn't just limited to regions that faced problems before the pandemic began. COVID-19 is now also impacting food security for people in middle and high income countries from, from India to Brazil to the US.